Today we're going to be talking about a very, very popular offshore species, um, the slinger, Chrysoblephus uh, penicius. Got it right. Um, Chrysoblephus comes from uh, it's a whole group of species, a gen well, it's genus. It comes from the the coloration of the eye. It actually means golden eye. So that's where they get the yellow eye you often see um, in a lot of the redfish that you get offshore. They are grouped in the redfish category so often they get abused in there will be a whole lot of different species caught and they're just called reds but the slinger is a very very popular fish very interestingly shaped fish they they are it's, it's actually a very difficult fish to describe in shape they shaped generally rounded at the back obviously with the tail and then to the front they got a very very steep sloping forehead and the bottom just pops up like that they've got quite a small mouth for this size so you're going to step down the hook sizes. So instead of using, say, a nino that you would be using for your your heelback, you're now going to step it down to say a 60 circle or possibly even a 30 in a Kendall. Other defining features: they've got a very, very distinct blue line runs just under the eye. There looks like the a woman that was trying to do her makeup in the car and you went over a bump. She missed her eye completely. So that's a very, very iridescent little blue stripe like that. And they also do have blue markings on their body, little dots every here and there, but generally a pinkish red color over the whole body um, like we said very deep body but very narrow so deep this way and narrow this way um, they are the the name itself interestingly the name slinger or sling ding whatever you like to call them comes from because they're very popular and they aggregate together the actual action of pulling the fish onto the boat they used to sling them onto the boat to get to go put the bait back into the water to get another one so that way it comes from slinger slinging them on they as you said smallish mouth but quite a, a, a largest fish they attain 85 centimeters um, so quite a decent fish that's about 11 years old and you're looking at about because they're so narrow probably only about a four or five kilo fish so they're not they're not monstrous in proportion, but they, it's, it's a decent redfish to catch. Um, they're deep water shoaling species. Um, they like to congregate together, and they're gonna be in your offshore reef and offshore structure in general, so pinnacles and all that, from about 20 meters down to about 130 meters. So from fairly shallow, uh, sort of, um, you can target them on, on your closer inshore craft, your paddle skis, your jet skis, that kind of stuff, and then down to 130 meters where it's, you know, you're really going to need a ski boat and go quite a few nautical miles out to be able to get to them. They are an extremely important linefish uh, species. Yeah, in South Africa, not as much, but in Mozambique, they, they're very, very important. Now, the, the very interesting fact with slinger is that they actually change sex as they get older. So, where normally they would go from male to female, other species that is, uh, slinger do it the other way around. They go from female and then they turn into males as they get older. So you can see this in populations that have been heavily overfished. They turn from having sort of like we as people generally have or humans have a ratio of one to one with male and female, generally speaking. Uh, slinger in overfished populations can go down to a ratio of 100 females to one male. What a lucky bastard. Um, so yeah, you can see that in the heavily fished populations. We've also seen that the size and the numbers have gone down recently with the, the it's obviously with the advent of technology in the recent years that you're able to, to find these congregations, you're able to put your bait right in front of that slinger's nose um, versus back in the day where you'd use landmarks and that kind of thing. Um, the recaptures that they've done um, with the tagging would suggest that it's quite a resident species. They sort of stay in one area. So it doesn't seem that they're going to be migrating a lot, but if they do, then obviously they're returning to the same spot. Uh, in terms of what they're eating, um, anything benthic, because their mouth is slightly down at the bottom, they're going to be eating most of the stuff off the floor. So small fish, squid, shrimps, anything else you can think of that's going to be living on the bottom, they can, they're going to eat it. They do have little teeth, but not enough to bite you off. So. You're going to be using straight uh, nylon for them. 
if you do have, if you are fishing traces, because of the schooling, the guys generally either put two hooks, three hooks, down to uh, 10 hooks, which I think is the limit at the moment to, to put on your trace. But really, if you're fishing for them, two hooks is more than enough. It just increases your chance to get a fish out without getting taxed. They're gonna spawn in Northern KZN. So that's in the, they're gonna move up there. Um, but that's gonna happen in spring, that, that side. They're not necessarily, the population that is there is gonna be spawning there. So not all the species, all the fish at least, aren't gonna be moving up there to spawn. But this is where they've been recorded. A lot of the fish, there's, there's actually very little known about where they move, how they spawn, when they spawn. So a lot of it is speculation, but uh, based on certain certain facts. So yeah, the stinger, um, the same kind of trace that we would be using, or tackle at least for the, the heelback, but you can go a hell of a lot lighter with them. I mean, you can catch them on a little spinning rod if you wanted to. Um, but obviously in the deeper water, you have to go to braid, and you're dropping it to 120 meters, you're going to need quite a bit of braid on your reel, and a very strong rod and reel to be able to bring it up. So that's really where the KP comes in again. Your 8 inch KP is fine down to about 50 meters. 50 to 80, you're good with a 9 inch. And then you really want to go 10 to the 11 and a half boy if you're going down deeper than that. It just, that circumference makes it a lot easier to wind up line as you're coming. So, shallow water. The shallow down to about 50 meters, I'd say eight, nine inch KP with the Poseidon Kingfish and then say 80 pound J-Braid is, is good as gold for that. And then from that deeper, I'd go probably 200 to 120 pound uh, J-Braid on a 10 inch KP and then I'd use the killback. Uh, either the killback or the, no, use the killback. Then for deeper water, so up to 120 meters, I'd use 100 to 120 pound J-Braid, 10 inch KP, and then the Poseidon Heelback offshore. And that'll be perfect for pretty much anything you're gonna hook there. So even if you are targeting a slinger and you pick up something a lot bigger, um, you're still gonna be able to, to pull it in. So yeah, uh, sling dings, slinger, whatever you wanna call them, a very beautiful fish, very nice to eat. You can grill them, you can fry them. Um, you can buy them if you want and yeah popular species they are sensitive to overfishing so even though you could catch a hundred on a day really try limit yourself um, take only what you're going to eat fresh and rather limit your your catch don't catch your limit as Dean would say yeah go out get a slinger cheers